He punished his teammates by blasting Nickelback after their loss to Orlando. Hmm. Now, one, there are Nickelback fans. You know why? How I know? Because I heard of Nickelback. So it must be a big group, right? And what do they call it? I think Herbert told me it's called Radio Rock. They're a radio rock star. Whatever. They're big, right? So you go into a locker room. Let's just all assume by the stereotype, we're going to listen to rap. Black, white, whatever is in that locker room, we listen to rap because rap's the number one music genre in the world now, which is a whole nother conversation we're going to have one day, y'all. I can't believe it because I was alive and aware day one of rap. And now it's number one. And let me tell y'all, oh, it's been a long road. It's been a tough journey to get to number one, but we'll get to that another time. So imagine you go into the locker room and you're a grown man, right? Because this is where the conversation is going to evolve to. You're a grown man, right? You Tyler Hero or something. You bald. Y'all lost to Orlando, whatever. And then Jimmy comes in, and Jimmy is the man amongst men. He's the alpha dog. He's Arr, Mufasa. Arr. Like he walk in and he pissed. Now we all lost, but you pissed we lost. Maybe I'm not pissed. I did my best. We lost. Hey, we got 82 of these. We all good. But the alpha came in. Rawr. I don't like this moment and pushes play. Do they still have anything you push play on? Yeah, pushes play on the on the damn eight track. Pushes it in, put the eight track in. Nickelback comes on, and he just blasting it. He just looking at everybody like this, turning it louder. Yeah, you suckers. Oh yeah, y'all gonna play harder because y'all gotta listen to Nickelback. I don't know how he connected those two and think that's going to work as motivation, but he did it, right? Just to be the a-hole, right? And I just laugh because I am uniquely qualified to talk about this conversation. We know in any room, there's going to be four corners. And thankfully, now, I was blessed to be in every corner of the locker room. Now, going into it, I only wanted to be in one corner, right? I wanted to be in the LeBron James corner. But I was in all four corners. Let's describe it. Let's talk through this. Because when you're the alpha, when you're the man, when you have that level of power, oh, there's nothing sweeter. So when I came into the league, I came from a small school. So first corner was, should he even be in here? You know, those undrafted guys, the Brock Purdy day one, Mr. Irrelevant, or me, the second rounder, but you went to Columbia, sorry ass. Like, what, what, what are you doing here, right? Now, there's another corner over there which is, okay, he on the team, he all right, he, he got something in him, like, we cool with him, we need him, he's valuable to a degree. Then, you become that corner where LeBron and those guys live, right? And I was in that corner too, where they're like, not only is he the man, we need him if we're going to win. We need him if we're going to do something. He got to show up. He got paid, he the dude, he's an all-star, a pro bowler, an all-pro, whatever you want to call him. And he is a Mufasa, right? But I've also been this guy. That's why I said I'm uniquely qualified. Shouldn't have been in there. Okay, I see you, homie. Oh, man, I'm sorry, Marcellus. Do you want some more cheese and wine? And then I've been that last guy. Where they looking at their watch every time they see, hey, Wiley, how long are you going to be here? You're Donis Haslam or something like that. But they're like, dog, I mean, you ain't doing much around here. You sweeping up after we leave the locker room or something? What is your value to us right now? But you the homie, but what is your value? So I've been all four of those guys. And boy, when you are not the man, it's crazy to be making all this money compared to the world. You're still a star no matter where you go. You go to the grocery store. Oh, baby, you play in the NBA. But then you go in here and another man petting you on your head, sunning you out like, hey, shut up. And you like, what do you mean shut up? And he like, I said, shut up, everybody, nickel back on. <laughs> what the hell? And that's bad. But then it gets even worse if you got some assistant coaches. I didn't say head coach. Assistant coaches that like to bark to them little poodles. Because they got the big dog behind them, the head coach who's sitting there like, Okay, go get them coordinators. And the coordinators, yeah, yeah, all y'all need to know. What y'all need to do? And this dude, no disrespect, is making, in a year, what you make in one game. And he barking at you, punking you, because he got the power to do so. 
I just wanted to talk to those power dynamics because I think it's hilarious when you see the man amongst men. And no matter how much he may flex on his boys, he may go home and his family got to bow down so they can get their monthly allowance. But in that locker room, usually it's one dude that rules. And I was blessed to have a moment where I was that dude, but I had many more where I wasn't.